if treated with respect, the cinematic adaptation of a Clive Barker story always goes well. Bernard Rose's Atmospheric Candyman from 1992 is a perfect example of this. I'm Stephen Archibald, and welcome to my movie podcast. Have you ever heard of Candyman? And if you look in the mirror, you say his name five times. In cities everywhere. Candyman? They whisper his name. Right. Candyman. It's just a story. Candyman. Candyman. Just a ghost story. Candyman. Hello to you. I bid you a warm welcome to my podcast. They came from within cult movie reviews. Holding a mirror up to society. Candyman, 1992. The great horror writer, Clive Barker, has adapted a few of his own works into fine films. The novella, The Hellbound Heart, became Hellraiser. And his novel, Cabal, became Nightbreed. Also, Barker made his short story, The Last Illusion, into the film, Lord of Illusions. The Last Illusion came from the sixth volume of Clive Barker's short story collection, Books of Blood. Candyman is the big screen version of Barker's The Forbidden, from Books of Blood, Volume 5, or In the Flesh, as it is called in the US. Having made the thoughtful horror movie Paper House in 1988, the English director Bernard Rose asked Clive Barker if he could make The Forbidden into a film. The original story was intriguing in itself, but Rose would do something somewhat different with it. In Barker's short story, a university student stumbles on the sinister Candyman in a rundown area of Liverpool, in a society riven by class differences and prejudices. Bernard Rose decided to transfer this spooky tale to Chicago and change its central theme to one of race. The seductive Virginia Madsen stars as Helen Lyle, a postgraduate student who's carrying out research on urban legends. Helen comes to learn about one such legend, that of the Candyman, a fearful and lethal entity who can be summoned by saying his name five times, whilst staring into a mirror. Helen and her friend Bernadette study this urban legend together, and they assume that the mythology of Candyman was merely born out of the difficulties and inequalities the black community faces in the local area. But Helen is soon to discover that the murderous, vengeful Candyman is all too real. Tony Todd, who'd done a solid job playing Ben in the 1990 remake of Night of the Living Dead, was cast as the titular character. The filmmakers had wanted Eddie Murphy for the part, but they could not afford him. But seeing as the muscular Todd stands at an imposing six feet five inches, he was far more suitable for the role anyway. Tony Todd's majestic sepulchral voice is another plus, effectively making him the Barry White of horror flicks. Virginia Madsen was interested in being in this movie from the beginning. She was chums with Bernard Rose and his then wife, Alexandra Pig. Alexandra was set to play Helen and Virginia was meant to portray her buddy Bernadette. The decision was then made to recast the role of Bernadette with a black actress. Virginia looked to be out of the project. However, Alexandra fell pregnant and Miss Madsen got to replace her as the lead. And if Virginia had decided not to play Helen 
One of this movie's producers was very keen on asking a little-known actress called Sandra Bullock if she'd like to do so. An entire community starts attributing the daily horrors of their lives to a mythical figure. The legend first appeared in 1890. He was attacked, mutilated, and burned to death. Poor Candyman. There were fears, even among such directors as Cole Franklin and Reginald Hudlin, that Candyman was peddling racist stereotypes. But I feel that Bernard Rose was making the point that supernatural killers could and should be any colour. Also, Rose was well aware that most of us horror fans usually root for the villain. And more to the point, Candyman's a monster who was created by the evil of bigotry. The character was a talented black painter in the 19th century who was tortured and killed by a lynch mob simply because he fell in love with and impregnated a white woman. Candyman came out the same year as Bram Stoker's Dracula and just like the immortal Count he's ultimately depicted as a romantic and tragic figure. So he becomes a ferocious fictional killer who appeals to us on some deep level. Swarms of bees feature heavily in this movie and they were controlled by Norman Gary. Freshly hatched bees and those no more than 12 hours old had to be utilised because they carried little to no sting which is just as well when you consider that Virginia has a bee allergy. More than 200,000 honeybees were used on this production. Tony Todd was smart enough to insist that he be paid a bonus of $1,000 for each bee sting he received. His bonus eventually amounted to $23,000. No wonder Candyman is his favourite movie in which he's appeared. Helen's friend Bernadette was played by Casey Lemons who went on to direct a number of movies such as Eve's Bayou in 1997, Harriet in 2019 and last year's Whitney Houston I Wanna Dance With Somebody. In order to save money most of this film's special effects were of a practical nature and Martin Bresson was in charge of them. To this day they remain largely impressive. Filming took place on the Cabrini Green housing project in Chicago where many good people had to endure high levels of crime and interior scenes were filmed at Occidental Studios and Studio City in California. The film's quality music score was composed by Philip Glass although I think the filmmakers missed a trick by not adding Susie and the Banshees fab 1986 single Candyman or even their 1987 cover version of Kraftwerk's Hall of Mirrors. Shooting is said to have taken place between the 4th of November and the 28th of December 1991. Candyman went on general release in the United States on the 16th of October 1992 making a healthy $25.8 million from a budget of around $9 million. Its largely positive reviews meant that sequels were inevitable. Candyman Farewell to the Flesh came out in 1995 and Candyman Day of the Dead surfaced in 1999. Nia DaCosta's well-received 2021 take on Candyman ignores the events shown in the first two sequels. As for Bernard Rose, his next movie would be the Beethoven biopic Immortal Beloved, starring none other than the main man from Bram Stoker's Dracula, Mr. Gary Oldman. I'm Stephen Archibald, and thank you very much for listening to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. You can follow me if you like, and all of my episodes are available via most podcast hosts. Take care of your good self 
and bye bye for now. I came for you. Do I know you? Now she is about to discover. Ellie? What's behind the mystery? I'm sick. What's behind the legend? 